So before we get started with this video, I'd like to announce that I have a merch store, thanks to TeePublic. You can find merch based on my YouTube videos, my TikTok videos, and basically anything of mine you can think of. Also, my Twitter had a reset on followers, so if you want to follow me there, uh, please do so. And now, our feature presentation. So I've done almost everything the Project Diva series had to offer. And then some. I've played every single game from the PSP all the way to the PC. Did he, did he do a front flip? Did a couple Let's Plays, modded some games, and even did a silly little Nuzlocke challenge that I thought was fun and had done really well. However, there's one thing I haven't done in my six years of being a Project Demon fan that I am. Playing the Arcade Cabinet. Now, some of you might be raiding your hands to type about how I can be such a fan of the series and not have seen one of these in person, and there's a perfectly scientific and accurate explanation as to why that's the case. You see, I live in an area called the desert, and while there's plenty of sunlight, trees, and water, there's not a single f***ing one of these machines. Who knew that living almost in the middle of nowhere had consequences? That's because these robotic beauties can only be found at some conventions and at certain occasions in a place known as Round 1. It's basically a bowling alley with Japanese arcade games, essentially feeling like you're in Japan without the expensive as f plane tickets. And since I live literally Hi. far away from everything, you'd understand my pain when I see photos from friends in front of the machine. For years, I have dreamt my time with this machine. And this year would have been the same. But then my sister told me about a restaurant that was popular on TikTok that she thought I would know about, most likely because of my follower account. Hey, go follow me on TikTok, please. But that gave me the perfect plan to finally experience something I honestly should have a long time ago. And on my birthday as well. I did a bit of research to see what round one was the closest to the mall where that restaurant was. And there was one that was 37 minutes apart in a town called City of Industry. Why does that sound like something out of the Powerpuff Girls? I checked videos of that round one to make sure the machine was still there, and sure enough, it exists. All that was left for me to do was to get the right equipment and wait until the 2nd of January to start my 29th year right- Yeah, non your life, champ. Okay, so I got sick of my actual birthday. But it's fine. I can just go on a day when I feel better and wait for family, I guess. It's not like I have to wait too long, right? Wait. 16 days? Well, shit. So on the 18th of January, 1 p.m. PST, hashtag West Coast Best Coast, I headed off to my first and main destination, round one. And about an hour and 45 minutes later, I arrived at that destination, where my lifelong dream was about to be a reality after so long. Project Diva Arcade Cabinet, here I come. I was told many things about the cabinets, both with interesting takes and valid criticism, aka not a random dude called the entire fandom crusty old men. Yeah, you're living all right. Living under a needle stack. And I kept all this in mind as I entered round one, which might I add is my first time in any round one. To nutshell it, it's home to some kick-ass bowling lanes, karaoke machines, and of course some arcade games straight from the land of the rising sun, including the one I dreamt of playing since joining the fandom. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah! Hell yeah! Let's f***ing go, dude! <laughs> it's real! I was beyond stoked when I saw the machine in person for the very first time. It felt like being a kid at Disneyland for the first time all over again to me. The thing I was jealous of others being in front of was finally in front of me. I actually wanted to cry so badly when I first saw it, which might seem weird to some of you, but remember, it took me years to even see one of these, and playing it was an event itself. For a start, there was no one playing this machine. It makes sense, since the game is pretty old and more available in other ways. That and this game has been updated in seven years? Excuse me, what? Up to this point, I've only ever seen people play the machines in YouTube videos, so I thought I could pick up on the console easier because of those videos, but man was it a different ball game. I kicked things off with Sand Planet on easy mode, mainly because I don't know how to read Japanese so I had a hard time figuring out how to get to hard or literally anywhere else. Oh, speaking of Sand Planet, did you know it's called Dune on Apple Music? Well, now you know. Who the f*** is responsible for that song title? But it actually turned out to be a decent learning curve for me, since I've never touched buttons these big, even as a USB controller. And for the most part, it felt pretty responsive. Like, 90% of the time. A few occasional hiccups didn't bother me, because it's f***ing easy mode. Did you expect me to sugarcoat the easiest way to win anything? Eventually, I learned about the ability to play more than one song, and how to navigate to the hard difficulty. 
This is where it actually got interesting. Since I was advancing from hitting one button like a baby being in a pot on the ground to actually using all four, it presented itself with a new kind of challenge. Up to this point, I only ever used controllers for the series, and the layout of these buttons don't exactly line up with those. And some parts that were easy to perform with a controller became almost a workout from shifting my hands around to quickly pressing the button followed by the slider. Hell, even the four buttons together felt like a puzzle to get right. On top of that, some of the audio was pretty quiet, even though the speakers were actually good volume for the player. To be fair, I was suggested to bring headphones, and I did, but forgot to wear them to make the notes and quiet parts doable. Now, it may sound like I'm blaming the design for me doing a decent job, but honestly, I'm not. I was just born and raised on controllers. Also, who gave me that headphone advice? Oh hey Barry, fancy seeing you in another video of mine. Eventually, I got the controls down pat. And pretty quickly for that matter. I managed to pull some impressive scores for first time attempts on hard, not like they were hard to begin with, and almost perfected Rolling Girl on my first attempt. Imagine what a comeback story that would have been. But alas, time passed, and I had to say goodbye to the precious gem, and make a half hour trip to the next destination. I guess I'll talk about it briefly since I brought it up. This mall was amazing. Fantastic selection of stores. It was both indoor and outdoor. And I bought so much stuff there, including this abomination. And Din Tai Fung was f***ing amazing. The best Chinese restaurant I've ever eaten at. Please go to one. All right, <clears throat> back to Project Diva. Now that I finally played the arcade cabinet myself after so many years, I can actually review it. And if I'm honest, it was pretty great! My biggest flaws were the buttons being in different positions from a PlayStation controller, the low parts of the songs not being loud enough, which was an easy fix if you brought the right tool, the amount of songs that could be played in the single sitting being two, and the song count being lower because of the last update being almost a freaking decade. I wanted to play Skeleton Orchestra for laughs, but I learned quickly that it wasn't in there. Man, we've been spoiled a lot with the ports. But even all of that can change my mind of how incredible my first time experience was. And sure, there were other rhythm games that had better and more unique experiences, and I played some of them like Sound Voltex and whatever the f*** this is. But I found myself coming back to this one after playing those. This was the one game I've been wanting to play for a good part of my life, and I never thought I'd get to experience it, but I'm glad I made it the first goal of 2023 to finally play such a historic machine. I have a feeling it won't be my last time, but I'm glad I was able to experience and share my story about my first time. Well, it was definitely a lot of fun playing the arcade cabinet. I guess I should invest in um, one of those USB Project Diva controllers. How much are those anyway? On second thought, I'm gonna stick with the PlayStation controller.